Let's talk more about that, that ordinary householder. Um, how can they save energy? How can they reduce their carbon footprint? You know, is there technology out there already? Is the smart meter the, the, the saviour? The answer to that really is around optimising renewable energy that is generated locally. So a good example of that is we're doing a project on the Isles of Scilly, which is an archipelago just outside of, the, 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 outside of Cornwall in the UK. We're deploying solar panels, uh, solar farms, and, and, and on uh, households, uh, primarily council-owned social homes, so that, that we can provide cheaper energy for, for those residents. We are then using an IoT platform to connect, um, put ba putting batteries in their homes, connect all of those assets. And then we're getting conditions, weather conditions, and using AI to understand when is the ideal time to generate renewable energy and store the renewable energy, and supply that energy to the, to the local resident cheaply, and then when is the best time to buy energy? So we're now interconnecting this ecosystem around energy to the main energy coming in from the mainland, renewable energy, weather conditions, and using AI to work out when is the cheapest energy that's going to be generated, and when do we supply it to the local resident? So the idea there, one of the goals of this Smart Island project that we're doing with the Isles of Scilly is to reduce energy costs by 40% on the island, but at the same time reduce energy footprint, or the carbon footprint, by 40% as well. So both of those goals are being achieved, or we're aiming to achieve those goals, by deploying this interconnected platform around renewables, home demand, um, battery storage, just a range of different things. And this has already started? Yeah, so we are due to go live at the end of um, this year with a first year operation in 2019. So this is a European Union funded project where Hitachi is investing in, in this relationship and building this smart island environment to prove that we can provide renewable generation in an in a economically effective way to residents. How about elsewhere with a smart meter? I mean, is this really effective in, in, in changing people's energy consumption? I think smart meters have a place to play in the energy ecosystem. The challenge we have with smart metering is it's taken a while to roll out. And, and, and what we now have that's overlapping smart meters is um, uh, the whole idea of smart homes, right? Uh, smart hubs inside of homes. So smart meters sort of understand your energy consumption at a certain level. Um, but things like the smart hubs that people are putting in, into homes enable us to understand a lot more around how you consume energy at a granular level. Smart meters do provide one kind of data, but actually I think we're going to see the market moving more towards understanding much more around how do I use my washing machine. There's a lot of smart devices in your home. Interconnecting those to those devices and understanding the behavior of you as an individual and when do you switch on your washing machine, when do you switch on your TV, and providing energy in the right way to support that kind of behavior is, is going to be the thing that's going to make a difference. I do have to wonder how much benefit smart meters will provide as this technology starts to proliferate. And what about public spaces? like uh, streets, parks, hospitals, how can they use digital technology to, um, to use energy more sustainably? One area that we're looking at at the moment is around um, street charging for EV. Right? So if we think intelligently around how we plan these public spaces and how we utilize the existing infrastructure, it's a good way of improving our uh, sustainability. So a good example is, if we are deploying charging stations uh, for cars across car parks, across streets, we need to think about those charging facilities being far more intelligent than they will be, just as a dumb charger, for instance. Having some renewable technology there, having the ability to put energy back into the grid, having some storage capacity, so making that infrastructure far more intelligent than it really is, and then using digital technologies to optimize that environment effectively. So for instance, using understanding car sharing, so having a, 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 an EV charging infrastructure that also enables car sharing for you to be able to plug a car in, but also deploying that telematics information to somebody else to say, hey, there's a car available for to use here. Your, what's your journey? Plan that journey effectively. 
So it will understand how long that journey is going to take, where do you then put the car next. So that interconnectivity of the different assets in the public infrastructure allows us to start to optimize all the infrastructure that you're deploying. So certainly when you're building new uh, towns, etc., there is an opportunity to really start to think about incorporating a smart digital plan into your local environment. So we are talking to municipalities, you know, very large ones in the, in the, in the, in the UK and abroad, and how do you deploy a smart city plan, a smart digital plan that connects your energy infrastructure to your healthcare infrastructure, to your um, transportation infrastructure, and start to manage that in a much more intelligent way.